Hey everybody, Dave here. I'm going to try a new product today. This is Coro Seal. This is a rust converting metal primer. This basically catalyzes with rust and turns it into a paintable surface. So, like BOR15, it has to be top coated. Now, uh, especially if it's going to be out in the sun, get away with it on a chassis maybe, something that's going to be underneath a car or something that's going to be indoors. But for outdoor applications, sure, certainly, you need to top coat this. This is a tannic acid solution. Like most rust converters, are there some type of acid, whether it's phosphorus or whatnot? They're very picky about the prep and application. So uh, this stuff promises to be very easy to use because you simply, you can put it on uh, either with a paintbrush, roller, you can spray it, but do not thin it, right? Put it on just as it is in the bottle. So a gallon of this is much cheaper than POR15 for sure, which is why I picked it up here. This is about 50 bucks. What are we gonna need? First of all, you need to knock down uh, any loose rust, right? Or flaky rust. Uh, get you a nice stiff bristle brush or a wire wheel, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of some of it. I understand that you wanna do it. You're trying to replace labor with chemicals. So, but the nice thing is you don't have to do, you don't have to do it down to bare metal, right? The ideal surface for Cora Seal is hard rust, right? But flaky rust, you want to chip that off of there. You want to get it down to at least just a good rusty surface. Uh, it has to have rust to work. So it will take a rusty surface and con convert it when it's done to a to a black uh, pigmented surface, right? It's, it's how it will look like black paint when it's done. First thing is to scrub it down. Get rid of all the loose rust, a scuff pad. Now I use a product like Simple Green, just four to one. Now it says on the label here, uh, do not use uh, acetone or mineral, mineral spirits, right, if I can talk, uh, because it will actually cause it to fail, right? The uh, If you use any type of oil-based solvent. That's why I use Simple Green, because it is cheap, uh, it's it's environmentally friendly. You can dilute it down about four to one and it still works pretty good. But you're gonna to want to clean everything well and let it dry, preferably out the sun. It's a nice sunny day here, which is why I'm standing in the shade because this camera, man, you walk out in the sun, you can't see nothing. Everything's shadows. So um, anyhow, then I've got a stainless steel bowl and just a plain old cheap brush, nylon bristle brush. Pour some of it in the bowl uh, after shaking well. This, uh, they, they say to stir the solution, but we're not pouring it out of the bottle. So I'm just going to shake the heck out of it, and that should get it pretty good. Looks a lot like mineral spirit. Uh, we'll see as we apply it. But you basically just want to put on a good heavy coat with a brush, roller, uh, or spray, and then you basically watch the magic happen. Um, it, now you have to let it sit for at least 24 hours before you either top coat it or do a tack coat. Um, they recommend at least two coats, right? So basically, you want to slop it on and you should basically see everything starting to turn black underneath the, the rust that is uh, if you see white or brown coming up through it then you need to apply more right so that's basically the general idea the more rust the rustier the metal the more you stab on top of it and then lastly before we apply it uh, get some nice clean rags and just wipe it down as a general rule if this comes back clean then it's ready to paint, right? So, or seal. This isn't paint, it's sealer. Rust converter primer. So, just to summarize, I hit it with a wire brush, use a scuff pad and some simple green solution here, uh, rinse it all off, of course, let it dry out in the sun, and use a nice clean cloth to wipe it down. Get yourself a bowl and a brush, slather it on. Wait 24 hours and shoot it with some paint. I think that's it, y'all. Let's uh let's try it out. Hey, you can see this is a Pretty, pretty milky, you know, solid white as it goes on. It's pretty runny. So, anyways, let's get to it.
Let's see if you can still see brown after it stops, after it starts to dry, you need more on it. So we're gonna cover this back up. No, let that sit. This stuff is pretty good at leveling out, but you can see here, they have almost a purplish, I hope the camera picked this up, almost a purplish black reaction happening here. That's the color you want. And if you still are seeing rusty brown coming through, then you need to add more product. So we're just wrapping up with our uh, first coat. I think one coat, honestly, is going to do it with this stuff. Uh, none of the rust on uh, this uh, subframe that I was trying to refinish was really that bad. It's mostly surface rust, if you will. I forgot to mention, one of my favorite uh, elements to this product is the cleanup. Soap and water cleanup. Just rinse it under the sink uh, and, and you are done. Now I'm going to let this sit out in the sun. Another application tip it does say on the bottle is basically don't do it within four hours of precipitation. You don't want to do it if you got rain coming. Now one thing I did notice um, is that as you're, you know, the first coat goes on pretty dang runny, but um, as, as you build layers and the underlying layer gets tacky, because uh, it does activate work pretty darn quickly as, you, as you've seen, um, I mean, literally within 30 seconds of applying the product, you can see the rust underneath uh, beginning, you know, turning black as it as the acid reacts with it. Um, but one thing I notice is that, you know, as you build your layers, it it likes to stay in place, if if that makes sense. So uh, the the longer it sets, the tackier it gets, and you add another thin coat. Well, now you're building on top of that. All right, we're back. It's the next day. It's been a 24-hour wait, so. We can actually take a look at what we've done, see if our rust conversion is finished, and uh, go ahead and shoot some paint on it. Hopefully you can tell here and try to get some of the glare off the sun. Uh, this has all pretty much come out exactly the way you want it to. Well, let's zoom in as close as we can here. But you can see all of the old rust, and it was kind of pitted here, uh, has turned to a nice black or purple finish. Um, you can see it. It leaves some brush strokes, right? But that's okay. Uh, you know, we're not we're not doing auto body here. Uh, so this is, you know, pretty nice. Uh, it's, it's relatively smooth, honestly. I'm surprised how well it kind of laid down and hid some of the brush strokes, at least, because I globbed it on there pretty good. Right here, I've got a few little dabs. Um, if you can see that, uh, this is this is from poor preparation or surface contamination right um, it, ideally I would sand this off and retreat but it's all in all I'd say I'm, I'm more than thrilled with the results from the Cora seal now I'm gonna shoot a little paint on it make it look pretty uh, this is the final product Got two coats of that epoxy paint on top. I have to say I'm actually pretty surprised with it. Uh, covers nicely and, and dries super fast. It says dry to the touch in 20 minutes. I, I don't think it took five. All right guys, so that's it for me. Uh, again, I'm duly impressed with this uh, Core Seal uh, rust converting primer, especially for the money. Uh, you figure this was only $48, $49 a gallon uh, on prime, right, shipped to the house. Uh, now, now, feel free spending your money on POR 15, uh, but you'll get a fourth as much of the product that, uh, unfortunately, you end up throwing away because uh, you can't get the can back open. I've, I've used it before. It's a great product. For a fourth of the price, I'm getting about the same results as I've seen with POR 15. Now, long, long term, we'll, we'll find out, right? Uh, and especially after this dries, uh, uh, 
you know, give it a 30 day, get under the car, stab it at the screwdriver. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see how it goes. Especially on the cleaner parts. That's what I'm really uh, curious about. Because uh, like POR15, it, if, it doesn't like being on clean metal, uh, right? It's got to have something to grab to. And then that rust is really what binds this stuff down. So, uh, anyhow, uh, uh, just to wrap up. Man, for $48 a gallon, you can't go wrong. Uh, this stuff works great. Uh, the the only thing, if, if you're going for if you know for a little better look, this stuff doesn't lay you know doesn't flatten out as well as I'd liked it to, right? I was I was hoping um, that you know the brush strokes would be a little less visible. But uh, that being said, you can spray this stuff and probably get a little better result. So I mm, I might try it uh, just to see how it goes. I do have the uh, nasty old uh, engine hoist over there, maybe. Maybe it'll be the guinea pig. Of course, got the frame for that old Ford back there. Man, I got a lot of crap I can shoot this stuff on. So, I don't know. Time will tell. That's it for me. Uh, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, click on all the buttons down there. We'll have some more fresh videos for you here coming up. Uh, I've got probably 50 hours of footage. Man, I just got to edit this stuff. So, um, I'm doing my best to get them out to you. Let me know what you guys would like to see. Uh, I got plenty of junk laying around. I tell you what, I got plenty of things I can shoot some video on. So um, that's uh, I've got more Cobalt videos coming up. Uh, I got more Subaru videos. Uh, still trying to get everything worked out in this old Legacy. Uh, plenty of rust to fix on it as well. So uh, there'll be some more core seal underneath that thing. But uh, anyhow, uh, thanks for watching, guys. We will see you again here on Power Dave.